everybody's asking, George, 2020 is going to end with what? How are we going to look at the end of the year? And then what is it going to look like as we move into Q1 and Q2, first quarter and second quarter of 2021? What will that look like? We're going to go over that today. But before we do, make sure you subscribe. And make sure that if you know of somebody that's looking at buying or selling, hey, you need to share this link with them. It's free. They get it updated every week. It's live and it's in real time. Plus, it really, it just helps them make the best business decision for when the time is right. And isn't that what we all want? I think so. Anyway, with that, make sure you subscribe. Ask any questions that you want up there in the corner. And if uh, we, we do respond within 30 minutes, and if it takes a little bit more than just a, a, a quick response, many times I'll say, hey, here's my phone number. Give me a call. Let's have a little bit deeper of a conversation. I can answer your questions in more detail, uh, which, again, helps you. I'm not going to haunt you. I'm not going <laughs> to hunt you down. Uh, you know what? It, it's free, and there's no cost. There's no obligation. So, uh, again, feel free to ask. We get some really great questions. One real quick shout out to Angela and her family. Thank you for referring me to your parents. I uh, had a great meeting with them this morning and uh, really look forward to helping them. So Angela, thank you very much. So with that, let's take a look. We're going to look at uh, month over month since we're, well, we're basically about mid-month. So it gives us some good metrics to look at month over month. Then we're going to look at year over year and we're going to see how this is going to pencil out. So what we look at here, again, month over month, our inventory is down 16.5%. Again, totally common. Uh, new on market, new on market pushed up. Uh, and I was a little bit surprised that it went up 10.5%. I expected a 5 6% month over month, but not 105 So that was a pleasant surprise. The buyers out in the industry are going, they're absolutely going to love that. Uh, ended, ended up down a little bit. However, we're making it up on the solds at eight, you know, basically 8.7% month over month increase in sales, which when we take a look at year over year, our inventory is down 38.2%. Okay, well, at least it's not 50% like it's been, right? Well, really between 42 and 48%, it's been bobbling around really since, what, about April-ish uh, as we started pulling down inventory pretty hard. Uh, new on market down 2.3% year over year. But here are the two, uh, the really good numbers. So the pendant sales are at 5.3%. And interestingly enough, we've been at that between 5 and 8%, but really in the last two months at about 5, 5.8, 5.5, bobbling around in there as far as year over year having that greater inventory or the greater number of pended uh, properties. And again, pended, let's be clear. That's where buyer and seller agree to terms, but the property hasn't closed yet. They have an inspection to clear. They have uh, a financing contingency to clear, and they still have to close, right? Versus our solds, but that's where the tire hits the pavement, right? So we're at 3.3% more homes sold this year than in 2019, last year. <laughs> and it's still amazing. And we have not slowed down. We are still seeing very aggressive offers coming in. We're seeing a lot of multiple offers. The biggest driver again, biggest driver are our rates. You know, we're still at 2.75 uh, for owner financing and that's bobbling. Okay. So, it's like the stock market goes up and down and up and down and up and down. Last week was a little bit lower, you know, again on uh, Friday, which was the closing, right? On Friday. This year was just a tad bit higher on Friday. Uh, you know, Wednesday or Tuesday could be, you know, down to 2.6. There are a lot of different uh, variables that go into it. And we'll talk a little bit about that as we talk about 2021 uh, Q1 and Q2. Not occupied. That's still amazing at 3.375. That to me is just mind blowing, but amazing and awesome. So uh, a lot of uh, our past clients are looking at rental properties for this very reason, because it just makes great amount of sense as far as diversity and it, it hedges against inflation uh, for when that is gonna come. And it will come, it's just a matter of time, okay? It's, 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 it's a given, 
Uh, it's part of our normal cycle, and it just is a given. It's just a matter of when, and we'll talk about that. So when we take a look at new on market, just in the last seven days, you've had 796 on market, 1,613 actually went pending, and then 1,369 actually sold. That's just the last seven days. If I hold this up, give you guys a little perspective there, kind of highlighted them. You can see right here with the pended properties that you know we are outperforming what's uh, new on market. And then of course the solds, those are coming in really well. Uh, right behind the pendant, which is consistent with what we are seeing. And again, so if you're questioning, uh, is this still a good market? And the answer is absolutely. In fact, it is an amazing market. Uh, again, when we take a look at last month and Marie will post these, okay? You can see the dark line is what is sold. The light green line, that is what is available. And when you take a look at last year, you can see that we've historically always had more inventory than what has ever sold. So since July, first time in my 27 some odd years in real estate, this is the first time I've ever seen this. July, August, September, October, November, and the reality is December, half of the year, we have sold more homes than inventory was available. Now, some people say, George, how is that even possible? Okay, understand. When we take a look at a snapshot, the final day of every single month, there's a number of total sales and there's a volume of number of homes that are actively available. Historically, it's always been Homes available, well, as an example, so in, uh, I think it was in August, it was like 14,000 homes available for sale. And we had sold, you know, like, I don't know, like 6,000 of them, right? So you had a 50% chance of selling. Whoop, now it's the exact opposite way since July. And so if we had not had the influx of homes coming on market each and every week, it would be catastrophic. <laughs> it would be worse than it is now which that's inconceivable to quote one of my favorite uh, movies. Anyway, uh, Princess Pride, for those of you who don't know, fabulous movie, you gotta go watch it. So understand it is still a great market and we will, as predicted, march all the way through December. Why? Still a massive demand, that uh, FOMO, fear of missing out, wanting to make sure that you get best rates. There's a lot of folks that, uh, that are just laying and waiting and I think, that's, uh, I think that's a big mistake. Uh, for those of you that are, uh, you need to reconsider this. But let's take this into 2021. We take a look at first quarter. We'll take a look at second quarter. As we're continuing through, interest rates will continue to stay at the levels that they are. They're going to stay between about 2.6 and about 3.1 for owner-occupied. It is going to bounce in there. And again, has a lot to do with not only local, right, when we talk about nationally, but also internationally. And then, of course, as we have our transition with presidency, first 100 days, a lot of this is going to, it plays into what the uh, volume of investors, okay, no, we're not talking about you and me, investor, we're, we're talking about the big ones, right, as they move in and out of certain markets. Uh, a lot of them are still in bonds and mortgage-backed securities, which as those values go up again, interest rates come down. And that is based on, you know, their concerns of volatility. Where do we see ourselves going? What kind of stimulus plan are we going to look at? Are they going to lock us down again on a national level, not only on a state level? Those things impact what the market does. And as, as the market becomes more volatile, they pull out one, right? To protect your money and the investments, right? They pull out, they go into bonds and, and mortgage-backed securities, 10-year treasury, so that those values go up again, hedge against keeping rates lower. I foresee that happening uh, basically almost all of 2021, potentially into 2022. And I think, you know, that's just getting a little too far out for me to speculate. Those of you that have been watching me since, what, 2005-ish, uh, getting my market updates and whatnot, uh, we've been pretty much spot on. Uh, and this year, we were target. Everybody else was saying, you know, like, uh, what is that, Chicken Little, you know, oh, the sky's falling, the sky's falling. We're like, no, 
the metrics that we see that we monitor here locally is not showing that. And we were 100% spot on. A plus for us for the year. So uh, we're prediction Q1 and Q2 is going to be, I think, very similar. Yes, January and part of February, I think it's going to be a, a very sluggish. Uh, it historically is. Even from 2017 going into 2018, 2017 being a very mirror market to what we've seen here. In fact, technically, we did better here than we did in 2017 by volume of sales, which is amazing, right? So when we take that into consideration and we start moving over into uh, 21 or yeah, 2021 and uh, second quarter of 2021, we will continue to see this same type of activity. And I think about mid-February, it is going to ramp up. I think interest rates will stay low. Inventory will uh, you know, continue to be scarce. So for those sellers looking at different options, hey, that is uh, an absolutely excellent time. Remember to keep in mind, you need to be ready. There's no false starts. You need to be ready for the first seven days. With our lockdown, and in fact, when we were working with Peter and Tasha, we were very clear with them, hey, the first seven days are absolutely critical, the first four days most critical. And the reason is that the people that look this time of year that will be looking in January and looking in February, those are real, honest to goodness, real buyers, and you need to give them that special consideration. That means your house needs to be just top notch. When you head out into the market, not considering an off-market sale, which we do a number of, but if you are on market, you must be absolutely pristine. Why? Because your first four days, those are going to be your greatest number of showings. Those will be your highest and best buyers that come through that are going to look at your home. It needs to be spot on perfect. Okay. Anyway, that's my two cents. If you have questions on that, just ask. There's no... There's no cost. Again, it's free. We'll just we'll just give you best information. Uh, there are tips on what to do, but really more importantly, what not to do to best improve your home. And we'll give you those tips. You know, we can do a simple walkthrough, show you where you're going to get your highest return on investment, so that you're improving in the right areas. It's something that we do. It's a courtesy. We love doing it. Uh, we love meeting people. So, with that, 2021, it's going to look very similar to this. How are we ending in 2020? We're going up. Uh, we are still absolutely just killing the market, which is awesome. 2021, expect to see something pretty much after January. Numbers just like this. And uh, so, again, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you share this link. Post any questions that you have. And uh, in the meantime, you guys have an absolutely fabulous weekend. Stay safe out there. In the meantime, I'll catch you on the next video. Take care.